Santa Fe. I'm visiting some friends of mine, one of which is the amazing Liam Badger of Hello. Canyon Road Pottery. I've been really, really wanting to learn how to do this. So finally today, Liam is going to show me how it's yes. done. You might be able to see behind me some of the cool things that he's doing. Those aren't even finished, so just trust me, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> um, <laughs> so how about that? Shall I try my hand at the pottery wheel? Okay. You know what? I gotta take my ring off. <laughs> That's a good point. That yes. is, there's, you can see these <laughs> marks. So what this is, it's a bat. When you throw something, it gets like really fragile. You'd have to let it sit there. Right. To like take it off. What this does is you can just take it off and put it there and throw okay. something else without it like warping. Oh, got you, perfect. Which is super it's nice. It's called a bat. Yes. Okay. These two inner, mm -hmm. those go right on those little pins. It's a little wobbly, is that? Terrible? It's not quite. It, they're a little stubborn, to be perfectly. Okay. There we go. Uh, that pedal is a little finicky, okay. so it won't go for a little bit, and mm -hmm. then it will, but okay. you'll, you'll totally get used to it. Okay. Yeah. At first. So okay. that's... That's how you, that's how you that's, begin. <laughs> this, is, this is the beginning. A little bucket of water here. We got some water. Sponge. It's a very thin sponge, which will be used to pull. You'll, you'll want a needle tool at some point. Okay. Start the uh, wheel going like okay. very, very slowly. And sort of what you want to do just with dry hands is almost just like give it a little massage. On the, and you're sort of just mm -hmm. on like the, you know, when I slammed it down, mm -hmm. there's a few parts that are going to be like really out of center than the other ones. Mm -hmm. And so your goal is just to try to get everything semi-circular. You know, by no means perfect at this point, but it's just so it doesn't feel like a square when you add some water. You want a very, very low friction okay. surface, so everything cover everything with water. So I just, like, sponge it all up? Yes, exactly. Okay, nice. there we go. Yeah, and then you want to get, you sort of want to get one of your hands pretty wet, and then, you know, sort of just nice. Okay. And at this point, you can start the wheel going you know, probably 50% faster. How's that? A little bit faster. So should I get more water? Because yes. it feels a little sticky. Perfect. Okay. Everything is trying to get on center, right? Okay. That's, that's, that's the main, that's the first objective. You want to get your left elbow and sort of get it into the, like into your leg. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And then with this part of your hand, mm -hmm. you're going to start bracing that clay. Mm -hmm. And you're going to feel, you know, where it's in and out. And you're just going to sort of apply steady pressure. Mm -hmm. And then with your other hand, so sort of grab your thumb like a joystick. This one? Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, with like all your fingers up top. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna, yeah, and then sort of with the bottom of your pinky, mm -hmm. you're gonna start smoothening out the top of the... Like this? Exactly. Okay. Yes. And so just, yeah, gradually add a little bit more pressure, add some more water, okay, water okay. to your friend. Start like pushing in with your leg and just, you know, giving the clay a bit, little bit more pressure on the sides. Yeah to try to get you know a little bit more on center and it's it's a work i feel like i'm going to push it so far away from my leg that it will be off center is that not possible and that's it's a totally valid feeling yeah i'd be very surprised if you did and about the speed like do i yeah this is a good speed if I, i'm inconsistent with my speed is that gonna it's not going to be the end of the world no mm -hmm. it's more about consistent pressure okay that's all you want although the outside isn't that centered a lot of like no but a lot of like this the center like central mass yeah. is uh -huh. so you, but you can sort of see this is this isn't mm -hmm. so now you can sort of start almost feeling around with putting some more pressure on your fingers themselves mm -hmm. and sort of almost like working that clay down to get it a little bit more homogenous let me ask you something like do your hands ever get tired while you're doing this they do yeah okay. they get tired and they get dry um Oh, they get dry? Yeah, so clay really sucks the moisture out of your hands as well. Can I stop for a sec? Yeah, of course. I feel like my wrist is getting really sore. Am I pushing too hard? Mm. So... Oops. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So that's just, yeah, that's just slip. That's okay. naturally what happens. Okay. If your wrist is working too hard, I what I would imagine is actually you're sort of 
you're putting a lot of pressure on it like yeah. this way, uh -huh. sort of what you want it to be is almost a straight line from your mm -hmm. forearm. Mm -hmm. And this is the part of your hand that you want a lot of pressure on. So it shouldn't strain your wrist. Okay. If you're just giving a, a decent amount of pressure right there consistently, yeah. it should like start to get on center. And okay. honestly, centering is the hardest part. Is it? It is. Okay, good. It is the hardest part. Yes. <laughs> no, it, okay. it, it it's genuinely is. Okay, good. All right. So I'm just going to get back in here. I'm going to get things going again. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is that the one? Is that what you're talking about? Like, yes. probably just so intuitive. It's muscle memory at a certain yeah. point. Mm -hmm. And what's really interesting is, I mean, with some, some, some of my friends that I try to teach a lot, they're always trying to ask for like so many pointers. And yeah. at a certain point, it's like, just, you gotta just it's like, it. I, I'll give you as much as I can, but it's almost like you have to have like the amount of time. Let yourself be patient with it. You know, a lot of like pottery classes will, you know, say like, you'll learn to throw a pot in a day. And that might be true. Like that's sort of what we're trying to do here. Yeah, that's what we're trying well. to do. For me, you know, it took four years to get, you know, to where I am right now That's... and I'm still I'm still improving every day. So allow yourself the time, you know, if you're going to try pottery, it's a really great thing to you know sort of focus your mind on because mm -hmm. it's such a central point like you really can't focus on anything else. But allow yourself the time to do so, you know, get to know the clay. That's looking very good actually. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. Wow. I love validation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little lumpiness on one, isn't there or no? There's a little bit, yeah. I would say the top two thirds of your pot is really almost there, uh -huh. and it's just the bottom that's there. Okay. And so you can be really tempted to just say like, it's good enough and yeah. start throwing, and yeah. that'll cause problems down later in the road. I'm kind of closing my eyes and just trying to really tune Totally, into... it's all about the feel, it really is. Yeah. So it's gotta get worse before it gets better here. You know, when I was first learning, my teacher would help me center yeah. the end, yeah. end portion of it because it's just, it's a little I would love if you could help me. Of course. Okay. If I could, yeah, maybe okay. I could pop onto the chair for a okay, second. Okay, let's do it. We'll give a little. Oh, still going. It's like that's, you, you've gotten all the key basics down. Okay. Like you have everything that you really need. Um, and it's just refining those skills, you know, more and more yeah. over time <laughs> that you'll start getting more self-sufficient at it. I'm just doing the exact same thing as you. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so your elbow really wedges into your leg, mm -hmm. and then I'm sort of like cupping it right in here, okay. and like this is where the pressure is for okay. me. And then really giving it downward pressure as well. Oh, downward pressure too, huh? Yeah. And then so I can sort of feel, I'm, then I sort of use my fingers to sort of like find out where it's not really working out. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a nuanced feel that... Yeah. I don't expect anybody to get on their first or fifth pot. Yeah. It takes a little while. And, and I'm it, okay with that. Yeah. I like, you know, I tend to be, wow, you, you're really molding the shape of it. Like it's, it's extremely, it's changing like extremely quickly. Yeah. Um, I think like I was afraid to like really push to like maybe in some ways I was pushing really hard and in other ways like I like held back from trying to like muscle it into a place where I wanted it to be. Right, totally, that's very relatable. All right, so I would call that centered. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so now we're gonna open it up. Yes, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a hole almost all the way to the bottom. Okay. Right, and then those are gonna be your really thick walls that you're then gonna pull up into a cylinder, okay. and then you have a cylinder, you know, like, sounds easy. And then but, you have a cylinder. And then you have a cylinder, voila, <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, so I'm literally just gonna stick my finger in there. So. This is um, a topic of debate amongst potters. <laughs> I was taught to use like the two thumb approach method. You open up with your two thumbs and yeah. your hands like curling around it, almost like cradling it. Okay. Also for beginners, you're, you can sort of like reference the middle of the pot by feeling the outside. Um, ever so slowly, perfect. You have a lot of water, which is great. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just pushing down. I'm like a little scared to like really push. Okay. Once you get sort of down to about the, you know, you've gone through the vast majority of the clay now. Clearly there's a yeah. hole in the middle, yeah. which is exactly what you want. Okay. Stop the wheel. And it's always just good practice to see with a needle tool, how much of a base do I want? If you go all the way to the bottom, you know, of the plastic, it's mm -hmm. really hard to, you know, get another 
bottom on the pot so you don't want to go through but you don't want to have a ton of clay down there because you know you just don't need it there stick a needle tool all the way down you know i would say go you know another yeah you know about half of that yeah okay distance a little bit further in and then we'll check again and once okay. we're happy with it then we'll start to the phase three of pulling it is very like i mean do my so you want to keep the walls as thick as you can at this point, don't worry about the thickness of the walls. Um, the thicker they are, the taller the cylinder you're going to make. You right. know, because you're just going to, you have yeah. more mass to work with. Right, so it's yeah. good to have it thicker, right? If the you want. only thing, yes, yeah, okay. the only thing we're concerned about right now is not go, opening up and then not going to the bottom. Yeah. So yeah, let's check let's again. So, oh, that's, yeah, that's that's perfect. Is it? Okay. Yes. Okay. So we have, I felt like I did get down pretty far. That's all right. No, no harm, no foul. So we have, yeah, I would say we have uh, two or three centimeters, a little mm -hmm. bit on the thin side, but totally workable. We have now centered the clay mm -hmm. and it's now fully open okay. and ready for us to pull. It's the best part of this. <laughs> I don't think, I, I, so I genuinely think centering is the hardest part. Mm -hmm. So we are on like the second hardest part right now. The most difficult thing is sort of getting the hand position right. Okay. So I'm just gonna demo on here okay. for a little, for a quick second. Okay. Um, what I really like to do, this is also a topic of discussion amongst potters of mm -hmm. how to pull up. I like pulling up with a sponge. Oh. I also like, um, for beginners, it's a really good way mm -hmm. because it um, provides, you know, a constant supply of water oh, to yeah. not dry out yeah. while you pull, which yeah. is really important. Mm -hmm. So for, I think for our pur purposes, we're gonna do that. Okay. So you sort of, you know, like you get the sponge in, Get a little bit of water out, no harm. Mm -hmm. And then you're sort of going to balance it on your knuckle mm -hmm. right here. And you're going to place that here. And that's going to, like, it's going to pinch the sponge in okay. between. Then you're going to have this thumb. That's just going to be a slight brace right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And then you get these two fingers in the bottom. And then you just sort of gently start squeezing in on the clay and pulling up. Okay. And you, and just like, the slower you do it, the more consistent it'll be. And don't, you know, don't rush, it'll okay. be perfect. All right, so I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna do this. Yes, this. exactly. These two are gonna go in here. And you're gonna feel it out and see what works for you. Okay. And if the sponge, you know, if the sponge flies off, no problem. Oh yeah, the sponge might fly off. Actually, on second thought, let's just try without the sponge for a second. I think okay. it's a little bit few too many moving parts. Okay, so yes. it's like this, and then, is this the only one that's gonna, or does both hands kind of Pull like this. Even pressure from both sides. Okay. And you're just like that even pressure, you're just letting it go slowly up the clay. Okay. And you know, like that even pressure, it's pushing the clay upwards. Mm -hmm. And the more, you know, like the, the walls will get thinner and like your, you know, your piece will get higher. Okay. It's, yeah, so it's just like even pressure from both sides. Okay. The consistency is key. So you, right. you, you just have pressure okay. from both sides, yeah. Okay. I'll try it with the two finger, with the outside of the fingers, just to cool. see. Because I don't, it seems a little bit more intuitive. Go a little slower than that, too. The the wheel or just my motion? Um, with my your hands? motion with your hands. Okay. It's a really, it's a very, very slow process of bringing it actually up. I love this. Like someone comes in, you start having a conversation and you pull and the bottom, it's just, it, it'll get away from you. Yeah. It's yeah. totally normal, totally savable. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'll leave. <laughs> you're fine. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> So now how could we get like this sort of teardroppy shape? Um, Can we do it? With this one? 
I'm not so sure. Okay. Um, the sort of like the approach you would want for that is almost as you when you open up, mm -hmm. you want to make inherently the base wider. Okay. And then like the top already shorter. Okay. The problem is it's really easy to make clay go really wide out, uh -huh. like you know like bow it out, mm -hmm. but it's really difficult from having like a really big lip to then yeah, bring, it, bring in. it in. Exactly. Okay. So you know you sort of have to. It's a little bit of planning ahead, yeah. so it's like, you know, like keep the top very, very small from the start, mm -hmm. and then you can really push it out and then like really collar in the top. Okay. But that's, seriously, that's great. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's really, that's, for the, for your first time, that is phenomenal. <laughs> what very do you good. think we should do to finish this thing? The last thing you want to do is just get your dry sponge now, and you just want to, you know, take out the water from the bottom, clean out the base. That's looking really, really good in there. Very, very even. Nice. And then, you know, just clean off the bat. Okay. And then the very last thing is just get a needle tool and just very gently, we're not trying to take off any height, but we just take off the very wow. top. Wow. And get that off. And then we just take our sponge and we make the lip really nice and smooth. That's what it, oh, that's what it turns into, but it's yeah. very light. Interesting. Yeah. So the heat actually changes the color a lot. Yeah, so once it gets over like a thousand degrees Fahrenheit, we go to cone 10, which is the highest. There's actually very, very, very small glass particles oh, suspended really? within that. On pottery, glaze is actually a really, really thin layer of glass, and that's why it's waterproof. All right. <laughs> How big do you want me to throw something? I mean, it's up to you. All right. You gotta do it in seven minutes, remember? Oh, okay. All right, we're gonna make it in seven minutes. <laughs> so yeah, you generally just, so this is already, um, this clay has already gone through a pug mill, which means um, it's essentially been really condensed and also all the air bubbles have been taken out of it. Cause one of the worst things you can do is be throwing something and you have a really nice, perfectly thin wall and then an air bubble comes into it. You have to pop the air bubble. That means you have a thin spot in your wall. Your clay doesn't look as good. Your pot doesn't look as good. and. So wow. yeah, it's, it's a really important step. A pug mill is equivalent to sort of wedging your clay. So it's getting okay. all the air bubbles out, making it really homogenous and something really good to work with. <laughs> That's what we're throwing, probably roughly three pounds for reference. Wow. So we're probably working with double the amount of clay that Sarah was working with before. So just as Sarah was doing before, the first thing you do, I mean like that's just absolutely not centered in any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> so when it's still dry, and this is not a perfect science, but you're just getting it so it's not, you know, like there's no 90 degree corners on it. And you're getting it roughly centered at this point. And I'm just gonna uh, get some water. Mine's filthy. Don't worry about the seven minutes. I was just teasing. Sure. <laughs> yeah, like, I want to stress you out. You're going to be like, <laughs> no, your pot's going to fly right off the wheel. Yeah, well, it's always, everybody always asks me, like, you know, like what, how fast can you throw? And I usually say, like, oh, seven, ten minutes. And I've never really timed it. It's sort of been like, I Okay, think. so you just started, and it's like just past two minute, the two minute mark. So we'll keep track and see. But no rush, just out of curiosity. So are you planning a specific, um, style of vessel right already with what you're doing um so it's really interesting i i it sort of depends um i i go very freeform mm -hmm. with it mm -hmm. sort of depending on so a lot of most most shapes that you throw in pottery can be um based off of a cylinder mm -hmm. and however like a cylinder has multiple different forms in pottery so depending like if my cylinder is like pretty thin mm -hmm. at the or pretty narrow at the bottom mm -hmm. and pretty wide at the top I'll probably go with something that's a bit um, a bit wider and larger in volume uh -huh. Versus if it's um, a very very like, you know thin cylinder mm -hmm. um, I'll probably go with something that's uh, a bit taller and much, uh, you know thinner in diameter So yeah, so um, you have to from this step you are already planning what shape it's gonna end up roughly Yeah, so like depending on the cylinder I am so I, I'm sort of like, I'm evaluating my options of like, there's probably like four or five forms that I could throw out of this, mm -hmm. like comfortably. And I'm sort of like thinking like, depending on how the cylinder turns out, um, that's sort of like what will decide what I want to throw. Okay. But I see that you're definitely making, yep, 
he's going in now. He definitely made, it looked like the top was narrower, but now of course it's kind of evening out, isn't it? Yeah, so this is what I was talking about before uh -huh. of keeping the top narrow. Yeah. So as you can see, when I went down, I also went wide mm -hmm. at the bottom. Yeah. So it's actually, you know, it's, it's sort of, it's narrower at the top than it is at the bottom, okay. which will sort of um, provide, which will help me when I pull the cylinder up, it won't bow out so okay. much and it'll sort of stay more vertical. Okay. Cool. So now that that's done, now we're gonna start pulling. And so like, look, even after four years, it's still a little off center now. Yeah. So it'll, it'll, you know, that's just part of the, part of the struggle of pottery. <laughs> um, <laughs> the struggle is real. The struggle is real. So, you know, Sarah's, even when, you know, she was pulling up, it got a little off, off center, but I was like, that still happens to me too. Um, if you just bring it back, you know, you keep it consistent. It'll generally come back into, come back into form. Mm -hmm. So right now, there's just still a little bit more clay at the bottom that mm -hmm. I want to bring up. Yeah. And then after that, I'm going to start shaping. Mm -hmm. So this really turned into a pretty nice cylinder that um, this is sort of like the ideal shape. You can sort of do anything you want mm -hmm. from this. What should I make, Sarah? I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm pretty excited. What do you think? What do you think? What, I, what should this be? I think you should make a bio jar because I didn't, I couldn't do it. Okay. All right. We'll give that a try. For this, I'm gonna have to still stick my hand down in it yeah. to um, push it out. Yeah. But I want the top to be um, as far in as possible yeah. to still stick my hand in, uh -huh. which will make um, me actually closing up the top easier in the future. Okay. You know, so you sort of have to think a few steps ahead. So I'm sort of gonna collar it in a little bit. The top's a little off, but I'm not worried about that at this point. Okay. So that's roughly what's gonna be needed for my hand anyway, so I can't really get it any, yeah. any thinner. <laughs> from there, I'm just gonna start working it. Whoa. I like what you're doing, it looks gorgeous. I'll try to flare it out a little bit more. There we go, all right, so at this point, so this is not a B.O. jar anymore. Um, so this is sort of the fun thing, it's like, fun and frustrating thing at the same time. Um, what I was going for is not, as all, not at all what came out. <laughs> but, but you, you know, still could because the top like gets basically folded over. You know what I mean? Sure. Okay. So you, I think you still could kind of. But what about that ridge where it's like, yeah, right there. <laughs> so cool. Oh, it's really pretty. Still gotta shape this a little bit. Yeah. It's quite beautiful. <gasps> Perfect. <gasps> The good news is, even if it looks pretty good on here, it'll look really good when it's standing still. Yeah. Because you won't see any of the imperfections. Yeah. That's sort of, it's a, that's like the funny rule of thumb with like potters. It's like, if it looks good on the wheel, it'll look really good in person. Yeah. Um, that's sort of like the little cheat. <laughs> it's much better than being a painter and, you know, having the, the sort of colloquialism be you know, you never know when you're done. Right. <laughs> you do sort of know when you're done here, yeah. I suppose. I'm going to color it in. 
Uh, yeah, there wow. we go. That was so cool. <laughs> Eight minutes and 50 seconds. Wow, really? Yeah. I'm using a rib just to smoothen out the outside and give it a really nice final. Yeah. But you know, it also takes all the water off, so you can't really adjust it afterwards. So it's like the final finishing touch. It's a really pretty one. What do you think? I love it. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> I haven't thrown anything like that before. I know, I, I was just gonna say, I feel like I haven't seen you do something like no, that. No, I've never thrown I'm, this shape. It's not like this one right here. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't compete with that. I just, I don't know.